Amazing Art Students, this art lesson is coming to you in a little different format. It's a YouTube video, just like all the videos you download from the internet. Just click the red arrow and the video plays for you. You don't have to click on anything else. If you want to stop the video or rewind, just click stop and it will stop. To rewind, drag the red scrubber at the bottom to the left. Today's lesson is about the blue dog. I hope you enjoy getting to know this cute fellow and the artist who created him. You will get to make your own blue dog and maybe a blue cat. Please send your drawings to me so I can post them. Miss you so much. Your most amazing art teacher, Mrs. Hornsby. and I have a special announcement about today's art lesson. In this art lesson, we're going to learn all about complementary colors, and we're going to learn about George Rodrigue. But best of all, here's the, here, that, here's the best thing. The best thing of all. You're going to get to see the blue dog. He is so cool. I love the blue dog, and he is so fun. But there is something in this lesson that is not fun, and that, that is a cat. It's my next-door neighbor, and he's, he, is, he, he is not fun because he comes over to my house, and he lays on my porch, and he... He, he looks at me with, with one eye closed, and, and he has this long tail, and he wags his tail like, come over here, little dog. And so I come over there because I like to be friends with my next-door neighbor, and when I get really close, he goes whap with his sharp claws, and it, and it hurts, and, I, and it makes me cry. And then he says, oh, little dog, come back over here. I didn't mean to do that. And so I go, okay, let's be friends. And I go over there and I get real close and whap, he hits me again with his sharp claws and I cry again. And then he says, oh, come over here, little dog. I'm not going to hurt you. That was an accident. And so I go over there and whap, he does it again. And then I cry and then I have to go in the house. And... Now I'm not allowed to go out and put my face in the cat anymore. I just look out the window, but he still looks at me with one eye. Okay, let's get started, but just be careful with the cat. Don't put your face in his face. Why is Blue Dog Blue? A tale of colors. Hello, my name is George and I am an artist. I've been painting since I was five. Just pictures of things I like. One of my favorite things to paint is blue dog. Why is blue dog blue? Artists don't have to paint things the way they really are. I use my imagination to paint my own world. I can paint a dog any color I can imagine. So why is Blue Dog blue? Well, truth is that Blue Dog isn't always blue. Sometimes I paint Blue Dog red. Other times I paint Blue Dog yellow. Occasionally I paint Blue Dog green. Once in a while I paint Blue Dog orange. I never paint blue dog purple, except for when I do. I can paint a blue dog rainbow. But most of the time, I paint blue dog blue, which brings us back to the same question. Why is blue dog blue? What color do I paint blue dog when I go fishing? Salmon. What color do I paint blue dog when I want a hot dog? Mustard. What color 
do I paint blue dog when I want to bake a pie? Cherry. What color do I paint blue dog when I go to the beach? Tan. What color do I paint blue dog when I fall in the swamp? Moss green. What other colors can I paint blue dog? Magenta, lavender, ebony, chartreuse, auburn, khaki, emerald, turquoise, mauve, Cajun, violet, apricot, burgundy, periwinkle, alabaster, aqua, gray, and chocolate. Very pretty, but still not blue. Blue dog is blue. Why? 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 Look in the sky. Blue dog is everywhere, like the sky. That's why. George Roderick was a very famous painter, an artist who brought his unique experiences to life on his canvases. He's known for his bright colors and his paintings of his childhood in Louisiana. But of all the things he painted, his most loved character is his best friend, this blue fellow. George grew up in Cajun country, which is a very special way of life. It's a combination of mostly French immigrant culture with some Irish and Spanish cultures mixed in, plus the need to adapt to the hot and swampy climate of southern Louisiana. George painted many paintings of Blue Dog. He painted him in all kinds of outfits, in many places like the White House or Hawaii, doing all kinds of things. George's fans could not get enough of the Blue Dog. Okay, yeah, I, it's true, it's true. I, I live next door to a little dog, and I was laying on her porch one day a few weeks ago, and uh, yeah, it's true. I, I had my claws out, and I was swatting at a fly, and that little dog stuck his face right in front of my paw as I was swatting the fly, and bam, yes, the dog got hit in the face with the claws, all right? But that dog did it three more times. And you would think the dog would figure it out not to stick your face in a cat's face. You know? I, 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 there's no explaining. Except this is why cats are better than dogs. Because dogs, you never would see a cat stick his face in the face of a dog. I rest my case. Okay, cat, we get it. You think cats are better than dogs, but I know somebody who might disagree. But anyway, back to our blue dog lesson. George was not only known for the blue dog, but people loved the way he used color, or what we call in the art biz, his color palette. The color wheel is where we can find three special color palettes. Let's find out out all about them. Complementary colors and color are colors that are located across from each other on the color wheel. They are said to complement each other because together one is warm and the other is cool. So blue paintings feel less cold when they're warmed up by orange and orange paintings get some cooling relief when you add some blue. Yellow and purple are the same way. Yellow brings some sunshine to the dark purple paintings, and purple gives some needed shade 
in bright yellow paintings. Who can look at, our, at red and green and not think about Christmas? The most famous pair of complementary colors. Notice how the red alligator really stands out against the green grass. So much better than a green alligator on green grass. George used his knowledge of color to tell the story of Blue Dog so that it grabs our attention in a way we don't soon forget. Now, Cat, do you see why so many people love the Blue Dog? No? Oh, well, maybe Cat just can't see it. All right, let's draw a Blue Dog. But before we draw it, let's look at Blue Dog just a little bit kind of notice some of the shapes and things that we see here. The first thing I notice right away is these round yellow eyes. They're almost perfect circles and then they have these huge pupils right there in the middle that really make it look like he's staring out from the swamp. And he also has this white blaze going right down the middle. Um, it's narrow here and then it comes out into a, um, his muzzle, you know, that sticks out from his face. And then right here, he's got his square nose, but it's not exactly a square. It's kind of rounded at the corners a little bit. He's got his upper lip right here that curves up and his lower lip right there. And then um, he has these pointy ears. And this one is a little bit lower than this one because he looks like he's listening out of this, at something out of this ear. And they're not exactly triangles, but they're very close to being triangles. Then they have this dark part inside the ear. Something else I noticed is that if I measure, and I do like to measure when I'm drawing, I like to find something and then compare it to something else. And here I'm going to measure or compare his head to his body. Here's his tummy down here. Here's his lower lip and here's the top of his head. So I'm going to put my finger at the top of his head and his lower lip. And then I freeze my fingers so they don't get any um, closer or further apart. Freeze them. And it's really hard to do, but you can do it. And then you put your little finger on his lower lip and his tummy, and it's almost the same size. So this part and this part are the same size. If I take my fingers away and look at it, I would say that this is bigger than that. But it's not. It's about the same size. It's kind of interesting when you start to measure things. Here's another measure. If I put my finger on his ear and then my thumb on his head and freeze my fingers and don't move, and then I put my thumb on his lip and put my finger down, it's right between his eyes. That's the same size as his ear. So we're going to use that measure too. figure out how long to make the ears. All right, let's get started drawing Blue Dog. So I'll put him right over here so we can kind of refer back to Blue Dog as we draw. Now the first thing we're going to draw is his round eyes. And if you make the eyes really big, you may not have room to draw all of Blue Dog, and that's fine. You can you can work with it. Or if you make the eyes really small, you may have a really small Blue Dog, and that's okay too. So whatever size you want. And going to save room for his head and his ears. So I'm going to come down about here, about this far from the paper, about that far from the top of the ed paper, the edge, and we'll put the blue dog's eyes. And I'm going to use some two fingers as a measure. Really one and a half fingers would be better, so I'm going to move it over a little bit when I draw. So I'm going to draw one round eye right here. I'm going to move it over just slightly like that. And I'm going to start the other eye about here. I have big fingers, so um, mine was a little too big. But yours are probably just right for that size. So there are my two round eyes, two perfect circles. Easy enough so far. Now the next thing we're going to draw is the blaze. We're going to draw the number 11. And we'll draw it like this. I'm going to go close to the eye. Go up above the eye just a little bit, come down, and a little bit longer than um, up above. Now, another one just like that. And that's the other side of his blaze. Doesn't look much like Blue Dog yet, but don't give up yet. So the next thing that we're going to put in is his nose, his squarish nose. And you will notice that it's pretty far down from this between his eyes down to where his nose is. So I'm going to bring this down a little bit further, maybe about there. 
and I'm going to put the squarish nose in, round those corners, just like that. And you can put in the his little nostril holes if you want to, or you can leave them out. All right, and now we're going to put in the side of his his jowls, his muzzle. There's his jowls right there. And so I'm going to make this like a parenthesis, curve it out, and right stop right when I get to the nose, because I'm going to draw try to draw one exactly like it on the other side. Eh, pretty close. And then we're going to go up and down to the other one, and that's his upper lip. And then we'll put in his lower leg lip like that, and I can see a little bit of his tongue right there. Okay, and we're going to go up here and finish off his blaze. You can see it's not a straight line, but sort of a wiggly line. Kind of hooks it in together like that. And then my favorite part, I'm going to add two lines like this, and this makes it look like he's his face is sort of wrinkled up and he's kind of surprised. He has sort of a surprise look on his face with those lines there. All right, the next thing we're going to put in is the top of his head, and you can see that is a sort of a curved line, but not much. And if I go straight up from the center of his eye, that's about where the the space between his two ears is. So I'm going to go start about the center of his eye, go up here, and a little space in between that, and we're going to put the blaze in right there. So I'm going to start it right here. Not much of a curve, not much of a curve, just a little bit, and stop it when I get to the other eye. Now we're going to add the sides of his face, and you can see they stop right here on either side of the jowls. They don't go all the way down to here, but half, about three-quarters of the way down. On his, the blaze on his face, they stop. So it's going to go around and down. So I'm going around, and I'm going to stop right here, and same place on the other side. So I put a little dot so I know where to stop. So I'm going to start right here at the end of this line, and curve it out, and around, and stop it right there. Now I try to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to go out, and around, down to that dot. Okay, it's beginning to look like blue dog a little bit more, but I think once we get the ears on, he's really going to look like a dog. All right, so remember we said that the ear is about the same distance as, as here. So if I put my finger between his eyes and on his, on his um, lower lip, that's how big I'm going to make the ears. So I'm not moving my fingers. Oh, keep it. I'm really stiff. Put a dot right there. That's how far out I'm going to go with the with the ear. So I'm going to make a triangle. And you, if you want to, you can put these little furry lines right here as you come down. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to aim my triangle right here and right here. So that looks like a triangle. Okay. All right, so I'm going to start drawing up here. And I'm going to come down and put those furry lines in, and that's one side of his ear. And this, this ear is kind of almost a little bit of a roundy ear. I'm going to go down, and when I get to about there, I'm going to start kind of bringing it back in, maybe put some furry lines in there. And then he's got the inside of his ears that are like a triangle, but not a smooth line triangle at all. Okay, we're going to go over to the other ear, so I'm going to make sure they're the same size. And this one's going to go more up. So I'm going to keep those fingers really stiff and more up. So I'll put the dot right there. Okay, so we're going to bring this down. So, oh, I'm, let me mark where I'm going. It'll be easier. And I also notice there's some hairy things right at the end, right at the end. Okay, so I'm going to bring this side of the ear down. And when I get to about there, I'm going to put in some furry spots like that. I'm going to bring this ear around and put in some furry spots right here. And there's the other ear, except for the inside of the ear. Make that kind of a curvy line. Okay? That is really looking like blue dog. I like it. All right, so now we need to put in his body and his legs. And so I'm going to make put my finger here at the top of his head and on his lip, holding it real stiff. 
put it back on his, the index finger right there on his lip, and I'm going to make a mark right there. And that's how long his body is going to be. This line is going to be right there. And his legs, if I measure one more time, are going to be below that line, about here, but they're not quite that long. So I'm going to squeeze and bring that finger in just a little bit and put a dot right there. So his legs are going to come down to here and his body's going to come down to there. Okay. All right. So you'll notice that right here's, if I go straight down from the eye, I have to bring, start my line, not quite under the eye, but over to the side. So I'm going to go straight down, start it about there. And I'm going to curve it out just a little bit, just a little bit, and stop it when I get even with that dot right there. It's going to be over here. So I'm going to bring that down, slide, curve out, and back in. Same thing on the other side. I'm going to start over here on that side. This one's going to curve out a little bit and back in. It actually kind of swoops out a little bit. And out just a hair, not much, and then back in. Okay, and that's his body. Now his legs are going to come down to here. So his leg, his foot, is like a square, except it doesn't have the, this part of the square. It just goes down, over, back, and then back up. So you've got to curve this leg down, out just a little bit, and when I get to that dot, I'm going to start forming a roundish off square, bring it up, and then back up. And you'll notice when it gets up here, it curves back. It curves back just a little bit like that. Here's where the above this dot. So we're going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to curve it out just a little bit and form that square back up, all the way back up and curve it in. Now we're going to connect these two together with a slightly curved line, sort of like the one we did up here. And there's his body. Now the other thing we have to do is put in this back leg. This is his little knee, and that's his foot. And the reason that it's, uh, most of his leg is lying on the, on the floor is because he's sitting down. He's kind of sitting on this side, kind of his weight's over here, and this one's just kind of sticking out there. So we're going to do that. We're going to start right here in the center, and I'm going to go out a little bit and then start to curve back in, then curve back out and straighten that out to a back foot, and then I can just bring it straight back in. And there's his back foot that he's sitting on, and it's a little smaller than the front legs because they're further away. They're kind of, so they get, if things get smaller as they go further away. Then we're going to put in this leg right here. This, well, not the leg, it's actually just his foot is sticking out, and it's like a square too. So we're going to go out. The tip of it is like a square. There we go. And that's Blue Dog. Now if you want to add a little more detail, you can add these dark markings on his face. They look like eyebrows a little bit, but they're not. They're dark, they're dark markings, and they're kind of Look a little bit like a hot dog, curvy hot dog. This one looks a little more like a teardrop. It's kind of pointy on one end, kind of pointy on one end. You don't have to add these if you don't want to. Just whatever you want to do. All right, we're going to stop right there, and we're going to talk about, in just a minute, what we're going to add to Blue Dog. Now that you've drawn Blue Dog, he needs color, of course. Look at the three different ways I colored Blue Dog and the three different color palettes I use before you decide where your Blue Dog will be and what he's doing. Here's my first example. The orange and blue complementary color palette. Blue Dog has orange fur and he's wearing a blue sweater. Maybe this is Blue Dog in Florida for the winter. How about a yellow and purple color palette instead? Here is Blue Dog when he buys eggplant at the farmer's market. Of course, there's always a red and there's always red and green color palette. 
This is Blue Dog when he looks at a red painting at the museum. How about a red blue dog sitting by a green Christmas tree? The possibilities are endless. I want to see the most creative place you can think of that blue dog can be and use one of the three complementary color palettes, either orange and blue, yellow and purple, or red and green as your inspiration. Okay, I get it. I get it. I understand about the blue dog. Enough about the blue dog. I know he's cool. He does goes all kinds of places and he's famous because everybody loves dogs. But I tell you that there is another famous blue animal that you're forgetting. And that is Pete the Cat. Now, if you want to see a cool animal, it is Pete the Cat with his crazy shoes and his great trench coat. He is cool. I mean, cool to the bone, man. Here's Pete the Cat. Parrot friends are going to have Pete the Cat. Now, we love Pete the Cat. If you haven't heard about this book, you've got to check it out. For parents, check the link below this video, and you can go over to Amazon and purchase Pete the Cat. Okay. Should we show him the book? Yeah. All right. It's a really fun story about Pete. He's a cat, right? Yeah. He's a blue cat, and he ha in this book, he has white shoes, and he goes through, and he gets messy, right? He gets yeah. his shoes messy, wet, and then they turn blue, and then they also, he walks through the mud, and they, they turn, turn brown. Yeah, they turn brown. Yuck. That's disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> he also has... He, he takes a bath, right? Yeah. He gets his shoes all washed, and then what do they turn back into? White. Yes, they turn white. But they change all different colors, right? They turn red. Yeah. Yeah, because he walks on a big pile of strawberries. Okay. It's a really fun book. So you got to check it out. And we're going to draw a picture of Pete, aren't we? Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. And they're there going to pop. Red. They're oh, going to pop. The, oh, yeah. All the... Yeah. <laughs> Now we're going to draw this picture yeah. in from the book. We're going to draw his face. We're also going to draw his shoulders. And we'll even color a background. Yeah. Sound like fun? Yeah. Okay, let's put this off to the side. We got our markers. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're going to use markers. You don't have to if you don't want to. You can use a pencil. Yeah. And we're also going to use two sheets of paper so that our drawing doesn't go through and get on the table. Yeah. You ready to start? Yeah. First, we're going to draw the side of his head. We're going to draw a line down. You, can you do it? You yeah. draw a line down. There you go. I gave you points, but see if you can do the other line without points. Yes, we're going to draw the other side of his head. You knew what we were going to do. Yeah. We got both sides of his head. Yeah. Now we're going to connect the bottom. This is for his chin. And I drew kind of curved. Good, I like that. What should we draw next? The ears? Ears. Okay, let's draw a little line. Comes down for the first ear. Good. And then, a, yeah, a line on the other side. You know what we're going to draw. Then we're going to connect the two. We're going to draw a rainbow line. Oh, and you drew a straight line. I like it. <laughs> and we can draw a rainbow line, too, for the top of his head. Yeah. Now let's draw his nose. We're going to draw a V shape. A V right down in the middle. Oh, yeah, that's good. It's a little off to the side, but I like it. It's perfect. <laughs> then we'll connect the top. There's his nose. Yeah. Should we draw his eyes next? Yeah. Okay. We're going to draw two points right They're above. They're really big. Oh, they are big. Let's draw two points right above his nose. And this is where we're going to start his eyes. His eyes are really tiny. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be bigger. Those yeah. look like two teeny eyes. <laughs> Let's draw another point over here on this side. So all the way over here, next to his head, the side of his head. Yep, and one on the other side. Now we're going to connect these dots. Watch how I do it. We're going to connect one dot over to the other side with a rainbow line. Is that cool? Yeah. Go up and then back down. Well, I like how big it's going to be. And then we're going to do that same thing on the other side. Good. Now we're going to connect the bottom for the bottom of his eyes. We're going to do the same thing but upside down. 
That looks like a football, doesn't it? Yeah. And then we'll do one on the other side. Good. Now let's draw the inside of his eyes. Okay. We're going to draw a U shape. One U and another U on this side. Now we're going to make his eyes thicker. We're going to add another line that goes around the outside like that. Is that cool? Yeah. Let's just make him thicker. Good. I'm going to do one line inside too. Do you want to draw one line on the inside also? That will make the white a little smaller. Now should we draw his body yeah. and his shoulders? We draw one line curved and it comes down like that. It looks like a square. It does. Your head kind of looks like a square. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Then we're going to draw another line on the other side. All right, what's he missing? His whiskers. Yeah, his whiskers. Let's draw four lines. We're going to draw one, two, three, four. Four lines coming out of his cheek four, on that side. Three. Three. Four. And then count four more on the other side. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Four. We did it. <laughs> We're going to end the lesson just like this to keep it nice and simple for a young artist, okay. except we're going to draw a box around here. Okay. Now, our art friends at home, if you guys want to draw a little more complex, you could draw his body differently. You could get your book and then look at one of these drawings, like this one, and you could draw him with his brown shoes and a mug. Or you could do it with his blue shoes. Oh, yeah, you could. Where's the blue shoes? There it is. We could draw his body with the blue shoes. Yeah. You, you can't see his shoes. You can't see his shoes. They're stuck in the blueberries. Yeah. You could draw him like this. So we drew his head. And you could draw his body coming out this way. You could really use this book to help you draw. So it's a good idea to get this. And you could put it right next to you. And you could look at the drawing and then draw it that way. But we're going to leave it just like this. And we're going to draw a box that goes around him. Okay? So first, we're going to draw a line that connects the bottom. Goes all the way around. Or the bottom. Right here. Yes. Then we're going to go up on both sides. You can stop right there. I'm going to go up on this side too. And then I'm going to connect the top. All right, we should color them, don't you think? Yeah. Okay, let's get our colors picked out, and we'll come right back. Okay, it looks like a picture. It does look like a picture. <laughs> we got our colors picked out. Yeah. We're going to use oil pastels. This is from Pentel, oil pastels, but you can use any brand. We'll leave a link in the description of this video or on the blog post on our website where you can purchase this brand. Yeah. Now, what colors do we have? Yellow. Yellow. Blue. Light blue, right? Light blue. And what's this one? Dark blue. Dark blue. We're going to use yellow on his eyes, then we're gonna use the dark blue to color Pete, and we're gonna use light blue hey, for the background. background. Yeah, for the background. And you don't have to use light blue at home. If you want to use a different color like red or yellow, that would be cool and too. you could draw clouds. Yeah, you could draw clouds in the background. And a window. And a window. <laughs> you ready to fast forward? Yeah. Let's do it right, right now. now. Oh, you crazy kid. You're drawing dark blue on the background, huh? That's okay that you did it different, right? Yeah. Because the most important thing is to have fun. Yes, to have fun. Did it. Awesome. You did a great job. You did do it. Did you have fun? Yeah. Now, it really is okay that you mixed up the colors, right? Yeah. It's totally fine. I think it's cool because it looks different than mine. Yeah. Yes. Did you have fun? Yeah. You promise? Yeah. Yeah, you did a great job. You could be super proud. How old are you? Five. You're five years old, and you did awesome on Pete the Cat. Now, this was an easy way to kind of keep the lesson simple by just drawing the top of his body. But if you want to make this more challenging, look at pictures from the book and try to draw his body. Yeah. It really is a fun book, so you ought to check it out if you haven't seen it yet. We love Pete the Cat.
We read it all the time. Should we say goodbye to our friends? Yeah. See you later, our friends. Okay. Goodbye. Meow. Yeah. Oh. Meow. Uh, I don't think. Me meow. <laughs> I don't think Pete the cat meows. He talks. Meow. Meow. He likes his guitar. Hi. <laughs> <laughs>